In this tutorial we will look at using the GeoBody mapping tool. So to do this we open a project we select or visualize one of our meshes. Now this isn't the best data set for using the GeoBody mapping tool but the principles are exactly the same regardless of the data that you're working on. So let's go to our interpretations tab and find in sedimentology our geobody mapping button. Select that and you digitize points around the geobody that you're interested in. And double click to finish. And it will generate a geobody object for you. This geobody can be visualized in several different ways. We can have a solid face to it, or we can have the uncorrected version, so it follows the geometry of the outcrop. There are different ways that we can digitize a geobody and we can assign different information to it. Let's go to our collections tab and create a new fasces. And create the fasces there. And I can assign a color to it. Then I can go back to interpretations and select in the active fasces, the fasces that I've just defined. And go back to geobody mapping and we can map in another geobody and it will be colored for the fasces that we've selected if we want to edit our geobody we go to the interpretations tab, double click the geobody or we can right click and use make active and when we do that we get a new ribbon bar appear at the top. Click that to show the vertices and you can see the vertices that we use to map the geobody. We have move nodes so we select a node and then we can change its position. We can change the size of the vertices. To make it a bit easier to map and move the, the nodes. If we want to interpolate nodes and add a new one in you select one node then another and then a new node will be added in between and you can then move that node. Now a geobody is an apparent object shape on the outcrop and we can generate some statistics for this geobody if we know what the true orientation is. So if we have a paleo current for this geobody we can correct the width to give us our true width. If we go to our geobody we can make it active and use the add paleo current button and in here we can add some new paleo currents. So we can say let's have a paleo going towards uh, 180 and we don't have any types of paleo currents, so we have to add those into our collections tab first. And that will be in said structures. And we can use ripple cross lamination. Go back to our geobody, add paleo current 180, ripple cross lamination new. We can delete that default one. Let's do um, 170, 
R Excel new. Let's do a one. A one eight one. So we can apply multiple paleo occurrence to the same geobody. So we have uncertainty in our estimation of the geometry of this geobody. If I go back to the geobody and I can use show paleo occurrence. And we can change the size of the paleo current rows diagram. And that rose diagram shows the orientation of the paleo currents for this particular geobody. So if we look around the back of the model, you can see the paleo currents out there. When we've assigned paleo currents to the geobody, when we look at the geobody's properties, it will give us corrected values for the width and the height of the geobody. Once the geobody has been generated and we're happy with the results that we've got for it, I'm going to change the fascies on this one to be test two. And if we right click on it, we can have a classify visible option. So if I select that, it will then classify, in this case, the mesh based on the fascias of the geobody. If I go to my data tab and open up the triangular mesh in the attributes, I'll now have a fascias map. If I switch that on, switch off the geobody, you can see now we've classified the fascias, classified the mesh according to the fascias of the geobody. This classification will also work on the point cloud data set as well.